G'day all. How's it going? Welcome back to Dad vs. Son. Um, just a, a little update before we go on with the uh, the next game. So, as you saw, uh, maybe, as I've been putting up the first three uh, introductory scenarios for Kokoda Campaign, uh, when I put up the last one, I, I asked for uh, opinions on whether I should just go on with the Kokoda Campaign or start a uh, Pacific War campaign using uh, Panzer Grenadier uh, because I've got uh, Kokoda campaign, of course. I've got Waltz and Matilda, uh, Jungle Fighting, Alaska's War, Gordel Canal, Saipan, uh, the Marianas, and all that sort of stuff. I don't have Leite or, or that uh, at the moment, but even looking at that, um, uh, we sort of have scenarios that go from sort of uh, uh, mid-1942 right up to the end, I think, of 44, uh, which isn't too bad. So I thought I might actually start a Pacific campaign in chronological order. Now, you know, some things happened on the same day, and that means that we may jump from the Aleutian Islands, to uh, New Guinea, to Gordel Canal, um, you know, and then we might jump around somewhere in the Marianas and stuff like that. But once we get up to, you know, 44 and, and stuff like that. But it means we'll be able to play Guam and, and that sort of stuff. And uh, so my plan is to try a campaign. Now, I'm not going to play every scenario uh, because some of them, you know, are 130, 150 turns long. And I think that's just there. Yeah, you'll get totally bored with that and all the rest of it. Um, so I'm going to go through and probably play any scenario that's up to maybe about 50 turns or so um, and go from there. So I've actually done up a list, um, cutting out all the ones that are over 100 uh, turns long at the moment. And that still gives me about uh, five landscape full scap page, uh, sorry, landscape A4 pages of scenarios to do. So uh, I might, you know, I'll intermix that with other games or whatever else, but uh, that's the way I'm going to go. So the first one we're going to start with actually is in the Aleutians and uh, with the Japanese uh, attacking onto Kiska, I think. But when we get back over to the computer, because I'll play all these on uh, on Vassal to make it a bit easier for you all, um, and then we can go through the game as we do. So that's the coming plan. We'll see what happens. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. G'day, I'm back. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so, Alaska's War. The first scenario is uh, Alaska's Warriors. Uh, so, again, United States against Japan. The third special naval landing force against the 297th Infantry Regiment. Uh, so, intro. Uh, Japanese landed on Atu and Kiska, expecting to find them occupied by American troops most likely from the Alaska National Guard, inducted into federal service the previous year. The Guard is just one battalion of infantry, supplemented by several units of Alaska scouts recruited from the Eskimo and Aleut population. Major General Simon Bolivar Buckner of the Alaska Defense Command frowned on including non-whites in, in the Guard proper. Um, conclusion? While the Alaskan politicians had urged to forward defence, Buckner kept his troops concentrated around key locations and the Aleutians were not defended against the Japanese invasion. There was one casualty. The husband of the local school teacher was killed by the Japanese. It's unclear today whether he resisted or was murdered. All of the island's 40 inhabitants were carried off to Japan, where half of them died in captivity. After the war, they 
uh, never were allowed to return to their home islands. So uh, it uses Map 3 from Africa Corps, well, half of Map 3, and we have uh, Japanese uh, Special Naval Landing Force and Army for the uh, Americans and the Marines uh, here. Uh, I think I might have grabbed the wrong one. But anyway, um, I'll fix that. Uh, a Marine Scout is the... Uh, the uh, uh, what you might call it? Alaska Scouts. So that's that. Now... Uh, yeah. So one thing I've got to set up for is Special Rule 5, cruiser guns. Uh, because the Japanese get to use some artillery. So that's what we have. So let's have a look. Let's get rid of that. So here's the uh, the map. Now I've marked down this side because uh, we only we can only go up to the uh, 16 column, cannot enter the 17 column or anywhere east of that, uh, which is half the map as you see. So I've done that. There's a town here at 1905, and this is where the town and surrounding hexes of where the Americans will set up. Yeah, I have got just a marine platoon. I'll fix that up. I've marked all the light-coloured area on the map here is muskeg. So I don't have a muskeg thing, so I've just put swamp to, to show that it's all swamp. Uh, just excuse me for a tick. Right, so as I said, uh, swamp uh, is muskeg, so you know that's cold, horrible, swampy stuff anyway. And then this terrain mods here, uh, basically anything other than the light stuff here uh, is ocean. So this is all ocean, all down here and up here, or I suppose. I Go here, 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 here. Here's the town. Um, so that's what we're working with. So let me just get rid of this guy. Uh, delete him. And grab a marine scout. Uh, marines, marines, marines. Marine scout. There we go. So that's the troops for that. Righto. So what we have, that again, uh, is we've got a Marine Scout, which is the Alaska Scout. We've got six infantry platoons and a heavy machine gun for the Americans. We've got six infantry platoons uh, of the Special Naval Landing Force and three heavy machine guns. And then we've got to get leaders. So I've pulled up the... Random counters for the leaders. Uh, we'll do the Japanese first. And they get one commander. Uh, three lieutenants. We can have a look at all them later. And one ensign. And then we need the Americans. And they have one captain. Uh, two lieutenants, and one of them will be in charge of the uh, Alaska Scouts, uh, and one sergeant. And there we go. right -o. So that is that. Let's make this bigger so we can see what we're working with. Okay, well, we were lucky with the captain. Uh, two for combat, one for morale, and a nine. Uh, one lieutenant for a one with a ten. So, um, and one for a nine, and the sergeant's not bad either with a one and a one. So, you know, we've got something on all of them, and we lucked out pretty well with the officers, uh, with the, the lowest being a nine and the sergeant only being an eight. Uh, the morale for the Alaska Scouts is eight six, whereas for the Army, uh, they're seven six. 
and the Americans have initiative two. Now the Japanese, uh, their commanders are nine, one for morale, and nine with nothing, nine with nothing, nine with nothing, and nine with a one for morale. So again, yeah, nines across the board, so you know that's fair enough, uh, but only a couple of morale boosts. Um, the troops themselves are all nine eight, so everybody starts as a nine with the Japanese, which is pretty damn fine. Right now, the Americans will lose one initiative point for every three step losses, and like they said, they start with two initiative. The Japanese are, are exactly the same one. Uh, initiative loss for every three steps lost, but they start with a five initiative, uh, which is damn fine for them. Now, uh, visibility is only six hexes uh, for the entire scenario due to heavy fog. Um, the Alaska, the, the Marine Scout unit represents a platoon of Alaska Scouts, and that. They're pretty damn good, um, uh, fight-wise and all the rest of it. And victory conditions, uh, each player scores one victory point for each enemy step eliminated and five VPs if the, town, if the town hex is under friendly control at the end of the play. A player scores three to six more VPs than his opponent scores a minor victory, and if you get seven or more VPs, then it is a major victory. Now, uh, terrain, muskeg, uh, treacherous boreal swamps with stunted vegetation, and the effects are as follows. A movement cost, Alaska Scout units and leaders, one. So, you know, we treat it as clear terrain for leaders and scouts. All other units and their leaders, uh, they need to use two uh, movement costs. So you can see that, you know, the scouts are used to moving through this sort of stuff. They've got uh, better uh, equipment and so forth. So um, one for normal, two for everybody else. Um, miring. We roll two dice each time a unit or leader enters a, a muskeg hex. Roll separately for each unit and leader, and roll once for each hex it enters. On a result of three or less, the unit or leader becomes disrupted due to soldiers sinking into the muck. A disrupted unit or leader that is again disrupted, either due to miring or enemy fire, becomes demoralized as is normal. Do not make miring rolls for demoralized leaders or units as they are unaffected by disruption. Uh, Alaska Scout units and leaders add one to the result for all miring rolls. So very hard to move through this stuff. Horrible. And spotting range, uh, not limiting terrain and does not block line of sight. Other effects, if you're in the muskeg, then there's a plus one to direct fire and a minus one to bombardment fire. Roads and tracks uh, negate muskeg for all purposes. Units on a road or track that runs through muskeg do not suffer any of the effects as long as they stay on the road or track. And uh, again, there's no fire um, modifiers if you're on the road or track. All these tracks on here exist, and this road is treated as a track for this one as well. So, you know, the town's here, but it means the Japanese can, I'm pretty sure they come up, set up second at least 10 hexes away from the town in any direction, in any hexes adjacent to the ocean. Um, so they're going to be down here somewhere down along this way. So they're probably going to try and come up these tracks more than anything else, rather than try and slog through here. Because um, their movement's only three, <laughs> uh, which means they can only move one hex each turn. So there's that. 
uh arctic hills we don't have to worry about hills this time so we'll forget about that we don't have to worry about hill markers ocean uh placing an ocean marker in hex per scenario instructions causes all hexes that are the same color as the hex with the marker to be ocean hexes and you can't enter any of them so if this is all ocean um then everything up here is ocean as well and here is ocean as well you don't just have little oceans around so that's that um tracks uh, rules for movement along a track are the same as for movement along a road except that all units and leaders pay one mp to enter a track hex from another hex and each unit or leader that only moves along a track or a hex gets the extra one movement allowance that turn so that's fine cold weather u.s army troops were sent to the Aleutians without proper cold weather gear or training while the Japanese were well supplied for their mission. This made operations difficult for the Americans at night and at other times when the weather was particularly cold. If scenario special rules indicate the cold weather rule applies, all American units and leaders have their movement allowance reduced by one, and disrupted units, American units and leaders suffer a special minus one penalty to their morale, exception uh, the Alaska Scouts. Now, um, we're not using that at the moment, so we can forget about that. So, Alaska Scouts, all U.S. Marine Scout units appearing in Alaska's war represent Alaska Scout units. They're composed of native Eskimo and Aleut troops, plus a handful of Anglo-American trappers, miners, and backwoodsmen. In each scenario where an Alaska Scout unit appears, the American player can designate one of his leaders as an Alaska Scout leader, all Alaska Scout units and leaders pay just one MP to enter each hex, no matter the terrain. They pay normal MP costs to, cro to move along roads or tracks. They get a plus one bonus to all miring rolls in muskeg. They can spot hidden Japanese units at half normal spotting range rather than the usual one quarter spotting range. <coughs> so that's what we've got. So we have. 20 turns so we start at 0800 and we finish at uh, 1345 um, i've put the visibility down here uh, again step loss and we've got the two morale values for the americans and the one and so on. sorry one that's where i want to put it uh usa Oh, God, come on. Yeah, got to hit the button, idiot. And Japan. There we go. So Japanese have only got the one, um, so one morale value of 9.8, but the Americans got the two. So that's what we have. Right. Oh. Rup. So the Americans set up first in the town or in any non-ocean hexes within four hexes of it. So let's come up here. So we're in the town here or within four hexes of it. Um, well, I suppose the town is the best place to be. So let's grab... Uh, I think the the uh, Alaska Scouts would have the lieutenant with the best morale um, because they know what they can do. So he's going to go with them. Um, we'll put the machine gun in the town. Um, with Two lots of troopettes. Or one troopette. No, two, two troopettes. Two platoons. Um, and, you know, realistically, that's where the captain would be. Um, we probably want a blocking force on the track here. 
one, two, three, four. So the, the scouts may as well start there as uh, there's the scouting party. And then we would have a couple of uh, short companies. Um, probably helping them along. So we'll have one short company there with the sergeant. Uh, there and one short company with lieutenant up there yep 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 or what we'll start there because they can always move back if they want and so forth but they've got to try and stop these guys from being hit so uh, We'll do that. Now, the Japanese have to come down within no closer than 10 hexes away from the town. So we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So from here, the 1, two, uh, one two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so they can start here. So some of them can start on the track. Now everybody's got uh, movement of three. Yip, yip, yip. So why don't we just set up three? Hmm, what are we going to do here? Let's make this a bit. Okay, so we would have somebody out the front having a look-see. So that would be one of the lieutenants. And he would probably just have infantry to start with. So let's put him here. Um, or do we all give them two and a machine gun? Ooh, dangerous, difficult, painful. No, let's do it as twos. Okay, so we've got these are all the tenants are exactly the same. So this is going to be our um, our our uh, advance force. And then you can have a machine gun here and a machine gun here. Um, I'm saying that they can go in these hexes because there's at least sort of half that's uh, land, whereas I couldn't put them here because it's more than half of ocean is the way I'm looking at it. So if we go one for there and one for there, like that, and that would be uh, the ensign can have one and the lieutenant can have one. Um, We want to. We want everybody up to get onto the track to start with. So we'll go. We will put an infantry, uh, two infantry platoons and a machine gun platoon in every stack to start with. Uh, the commander can have the other lieutenant and the lieutenant with the ensign. So that's where they're going to start out. So their cunning plan is to move up the track. They can feed in and send themselves along, then up here and then around here um, because that's where they're going to be able to move the fastest. 
without worrying about being mired or anything else. Um, so that's what they want to do. Um, yep, I think that's it. Okay, so that's what we've done. We've set it up. I will do up some... Um, okay, so cruiser guns was the other thing we are talking about. At the start of each turning in... At the start of each turn, ending in double zero or three zero, which is the first turn, so every on hour and half hour turn, the Japanese player writes down the number of any one hex. At the start of the following turn, the pre-designated hex is bombarded by one thirty, one by thirty off-board artillery. This happens before the initiative roll and does not count as a Japanese activation. Uh, Pre-designated cruiser bombardments cannot bombardments cannot be cancelled or changed. So we need an off-board artillery. Uh, and we need game pieces. Or... Off-board artillery. Uh, for 30. Uh, no, it's not that. Um, naval gunfire. Where is that? That's the only off-board artillery is an 8 not how it's the units or anything else. Hmm. Um, what else have we got then? Let's have a look at, see if there's anything on here. What do we want? 30. Okay, I'm just going to use these here, uh, even though it's for the Japanese, okay? So they get one, two, three. That's their 30. Because otherwise, you know, it's just going to be a pain in the bum. Um, okay, so we can get rid of that. And I can leave that over there. And I will do up a list for the turns, and uh, I'll do up a couple of lists, and then we can simply roll a die to see which list we go to. Um, that way uh, it's not going to hit all the time where they necessarily want it. Righto, so thanks very much. Hope you enjoy, and I will see you back here for turn one next time. Bye for now.